Gabriel Duchesne, Caroline Touzin et Olivier Jean de La Presse ont offert un aperçu de première main de la triste réalité que vivent les communautés autochtones au Québec, plus particulièrement les jeunes. En examinant un nombre incalculable de rapports de coroner, ils ont découvert que le taux de mort violente y était cinq fois plus élevé que chez les jeunes non autochtones. Depuis 2000, 259 enfants et jeunes autochtones sont décédés de morts violentes ou dans des circonstances suspectes, incluant 102 suicides. Les reporters se sont rendus dans des coins éloignés du Québec pour interviewer les membres des familles et pour donner un visage humain à cette tragédie silencieuse. Il en est résulté un puissant exposé d'une situation alarmante qui a été ignorée depuis trop longtemps. Globe and Mail reporter Renata Delisio's gripping article about the suicides of Canadian Forces members who served in Afghanistan is a difficult, upsetting read. The inability of those in authority to deal with post-traumatic stress disorder and provide proper medical treatment to our damaged soldiers is inexplicable. By combing death notices, interviewing families, and eliciting information from a resistant military through eight relentless months of access to information requests, she put a number on these suicides for the first time, 54. Combined with emotional portraits of the dead soldiers and their loved ones, the package packed a wallop that has already had a profound impact on the military's approach to soldiers in trouble. This Toronto Star investigation into one of the most vital institutions in our society one that enforces laws and is meant to protect us from wrongdoers, uncovers in convincing fashion how an alarming number of police officers in the Toronto area stray far from the straight and narrow, yet keep their jobs. It paints a picture, chapter and verse, of hundreds of individuals whose behavior is disturbingly similar to other perpetrators of crime. This report reveals why the police fought hard to block the truth uncovered in 400 case files, in countless FOI requests, and demonstrates why access to information is an essential and powerful tool in protecting the public interest. The troubling revelations in this investigative package by reporters Jamie Poisson and Jesse McLean is public service journalism at its best. we need to be conducting and after the hell year we've had I think it's amazing that we're still producing work like this so let's see which of these <laughs> let's see quelle grande enquête is in the envelope for her grande enquête the winner is the Globe and Mail's Renata Delisio <laughs> It was Renata's birthday yesterday, so this is this is her belated birthday present. Yesterday I sat and met with the widow of a soldier who killed himself less than a year after returning from Afghanistan. It's taken her five years to feel ready to tell her story. And this is the thing about suicide. It's something we don't talk about. It's difficult. And as a result, these deaths are often hidden and families struggle in silence. I want to thank the families of Paul Martin, Scott Smith, Ron Anderson, and Jamie McMullen for sharing and trusting me with their stories. They gave meaning to the statistics and the ATIPs, to information that the government and the military didn't want the public to know and they gave a voice to the more than 60 other soldiers who have taken their lives after returning from the Afghanistan war. Unfortunately, it's a count that keeps growing. I want to thank my editors at The Globe, Dennis, Sinclair, and David, for their support, patience, and their commitment to investigative journalism. I also want to thank the amazing team I worked with, with people like Bob and Victor and Laura and Michelle, who went on this journey with me. Um, and I also want to acknowledge the great investigative work of La Presse and the Toronto Star. These stories aren't easy. They require time, passion, and a whole lot of stubbornness. 
and it really is an honor to be in a room with so many stubborn journalists. And I also want to thank the Edmonton Journal and the Calgary Herald. These are newspapers that I started my career at, where I started learning what it meant to do investigative reporting. And these are newsrooms that are going through difficult transitions. But there are so many talented journalists who remain, who put their head down and keep fighting the good fight, because they believe in the power of journalism. Thank you.